so we've traced our fertilizer solution from the mixing through the piping, delivering it to the crop. We saw how the solenoid valves with some type of an irrigation clock or a timer control when that solution is allowed to flow, how long it's allowed to flow. But we want to look at what happens then once we allow our fertilizer solution to come on out to the crop and how we actually deliver it to the plants. And Mark, could you take us then, we, we saw this same delivery pipe uh, going uh, from the solenoid valves, but what happens then once it comes on out here to the crop? Well, what, past the solenoid, we're, we're running it through just a black poly irrigation pipe, just a standard 0.7 inch okay. pipe. And these are the emitters that we referred to, and these are pressure compensated emitters. Um, I believe they require a minimum of 15 PSI or they won't run. So, but any any pressure above that, they put out the same amount. And these happen to be two liter per hour emitters. That's about half a gallon per hour. And we run our irrigation um, for one minute. So we're delivering approximately 30 mils, 30 milliliters of solution to the plant every time we irrigate. So small amounts. Uh, Providing just a small amount of solution to not overwhelm the substrate with the solution. So the emitters uh, deliver the solution to the drip tube, and that ends in a drip stake, which um, goes into the substrate and stays in place. So the solution comes out through the drip stake and down into the substrate. So that holds it in the substrate where you place it in a solution that trickles down? Right, it comes through here, down. Delivered to the substrate so it's not flowing or spraying out somewhere else. And we, we put these right next to the plant so that they're delivering the solution right to the plant. But now in your system, then with those stakes, you say you put it next to the plant, but that's not spraying water on the plant. No, on it's, plant. no it's not uh, a spray stake, it's, it's a drip stake. So the water flows down, uh, it should not wet the ground, it should not be wet the ground. Now, do you then have one stake per plant? Is that how you're set up here? We're set up for one stake per plant. So one emitter and one stake per plant. And you indicated then to repeat for me that you are going, you're irrigating low volumes with frequently. Low volumes and frequently. Uh, we want to maintain a nice uniform uh, wetness to the, to the substrate as opposed to it being very wet and dry. So not these up and down cycles, right. so but very as, as stable as possible. Now, if you uh, were to irrigate enough, fertigate enough that you had any kind of leachate coming out, the, uh, the system you have here, that we'll look at it in more detail in another video, but you actually have a PVC pipe under here? That's right. So we catch, we catch the drainage and uh, we measure the drainage because we want to have a balance between the amount that we're putting in, we call drip, and the amount that is, is flowing out, which we call drain. And basically, there's a pretty standard recommendation in most hydroponics that you want about 30 to 40 percent of what you apply to drain out of the container or the trough or whatever it is you're growing in. And this way, thinking about being more sustainable, environmentally friendly, then it's much better to collect that coming out the bottom also though, than just to simply let it go to your ground and oh, sure. and you drain into your You can take it to, I mean, if it's non-recirculating, you can take it to sewer. Some people actually collect it and blend it and put it on their fields as a fertilizer. Um, and if you're recirculating, of course, you need to recapture that somehow right. and deliver it to your, your sterilization system or recirculation system. So. Right. Now, we, you know, we've talked about your frequency and the volumes and things like that. Of course, exactly what you're delivering is you know, the frequency, the volumes, things like that. You're going to have a lot of that's going to depend on the system you're using, the substrate you're using, and, and all that's, of those. Absolutely. I mean, even different containers are going to have a different requirement for irrigation. Substrates, absolutely, are going to have different requirements. Um, we're using a one-part heat, one-part coconut core, two parts perlite mix. So, uh, we have a lot of water holding capacity right, there, right. so we're not irrigating um, that much at all. So we irrigate uh, maybe 10 to 12 times a day, so we're, not, right. we're only adding um, several hundred milliliters, milliliters of solution to the plant in a day. And if a grower, of course, has a different system, has a different substrate, they would really, they're going to have to kind of learn their system and know how to make those That's adjustments. Right. So uh, we'll actually be seeing 
other types of systems and other substrates and various videos that we're going to have in this YouTube channel. So growers will get to sort of hear how we're changing up some of those things mm -hmm. based on the systems. And also in a future video, as I said, we'll come back and look at your, your system there in a little bit more detail.